Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and tonight I've been invited to a potluck supper. And you know, for potlucks, there's only one way to go, and that's with pasta. This means I'm gonna need to find the freshest pasta around, and then I'll show y'all three pasta abilities that'll make it look like you've been cooking all day. First, I think I'm gonna start with a beautiful baked spaghetti. And then I'll show you how to make an exotic spicy shrimp filled casserole that I promise will have the folks lining up for seconds. And last but not least, a fettuccine chicken salad that's light and just right. So y'all go get your water to boiling and get the strainer out because today it's all about potluck. You know, there's nothing better than this time of year using fresh herbs from your garden and your pastas, but not just an ordinary pasta, a wonderful fresh pasta. So come with me, we're gonna get some. Now today, I've decided to go all out for this special pasta potluck dinner. That's why I'm going to see my friend Angela. She makes the best fresh pasta in my neck of the woods. But y'all don't worry if you can't get fresh pasta near your house because all of the dishes I'm making today work out just great with regular dried boxed pasta. What are we making here? This is the pasta sheets. It's rolling out and, um, and then we'll put it over and we'll cut it into whatever you need. You want to make start with fettuccine? That sounds great. Okay. Now, would we make spaghetti out of this, or is this yep. the, just the flat? No, this is going to make spaghetti, angel hair, fettuccine, whatever you need. Okay, so it's the same pasta, just different shapes. Exactly. And here's your fresh fettuccine. I hope this is how oh, you oh, like it. Just the way I like it. Okay, now we're going to just package this up for you in the box. Make I little nests. <laughs> I love the way you package yes, it. Yes, I already have the spaghetti and the angel and hair. And almost like gift boxes, a work of art. Thank you. I'm sure your recipe will turn out lovely. And don't forget, the pasta cooks very quickly, the fresh pasta. And you're all set. Okay. Here you so, go, Paula. One more time. Five days in the fridge. Right, five days in the fridge. 30 days in the freezer. freezer. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much. Thank I know you. it's going to be heavenly. I'm sure it will, too. Thank you, Angela. Bye, Paula. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Angela had some wonderful pastas there for me. Uh, I think you can see why I'm willing to go to this kind of trouble for this baked spaghetti uh, by going to see Angela and, and getting some of her products. They're just the best, freshest you can get. And we're going to start today by making our sauce for baked spaghetti. Fodor Magazine actually named the baked spaghetti that we serve at the Lady and Sons the very best baked spaghetti in the South. So I think you're going to love this recipe. We're going to start with a little olive oil. And we're going to start by sauteing chopped yellow onion and chopped green pepper and minced fresh garlic. And we're just going to stir those around and let them sweat for a few minutes. They don't have to get soft and gooshy, but just, like I said, we're going to let them just sweat. All right. Our onions and our peppers and our garlic has sweated, and now it's time to add the tomatoes. These are canned diced tomatoes. Now you can use fresh if you like. They make the best sauces. And this is an ordinary canned tomato sauce. And I'm adding a little water to ours. And now we're gonna add our seasonings. We've got an Italian seasoning, and we've got some seasoning salt, a little sugar, 
And then I'm gonna put house seasoning and I'm just gonna kinda do this to taste. The last thing I wanna do is add this wonderful fresh parsley that I got from the garden. This is an Italian parsley. It's my favorite of all the parsleys. And we're just gonna chop just a little bit. This is just so pretty in that sauce, the red and the greens. And it's ready for the cover. We're gonna let this simmer for about 30 minutes uh, before I add the meat to it. And it's so easy. While our sauce has been simmering, I've been browning our ground meat. Now for this particular dish today, I'm using a, a ground round hamburger meat, which is quite delicious. And look at our sauce, it looks fabulous. Just add our meat to the sauce, and then we're gonna let it simmer for, oh gosh, maybe 20 or 25 more minutes. So you can see you really can't mess this dish up. That looks just perfect. So we're gonna put the lid on it and let it simmer. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna come back here and now we're gonna move to the star of this dish, our fresh pasta. Look how beautiful that is. This pasta that we're using for the baked spaghetti is a regular spaghetti noodle size. And you can see how beautiful and fresh it is. And it's been dusted with semolina flour so it won't stick. Now we're gonna check our water and hopefully it's at a rapid boil. Because it is fresh pasta, it cooks in a quicker time than your ordinary hard box pastas. Drop it in there, in this beautiful pasta. Doesn't that look so good? So we're gonna just gather all of our ingredients close to us and assemble our pasta, and this is so, so easy. We're gonna start by using uh, just an ordinary 13 by nine by two container. Oh, everything is smelling so good. We're gonna put just a little bit of sauce in the bottom of our pan so that our pasta can kind of rest on it. Doesn't that pasta look delicious? And we're gonna put a layer of pasta on top of the sauce. About the only way that you can ruin this dish is really by overcooking your pasta because it's gonna have about 20 or 25 more minutes of bacon after we assemble it. So this is not through getting all the heat that it's gonna get. Okay, now we've got a nice thin layer of our pasta and we're gonna add a layer of cheese. This is a sharp cheddar and this is just a Monterey Jack. So now we're gonna go with another layer of sauce. All right, one more thin layer of pasta. So we're just gonna finish evening this out. Okay, that looks just about perfect. So we're just gonna finish putting the rest of the sauce on it. All we have to do now is top it with our cheeses. And one more time, I'm using a sharp grated cheddar and a Monterey Jack, but you can use anything you want to. This pretty baby is ready to go into the oven now. We're gonna let it bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. Now, if this were cold, we would bake it probably 45 minutes. But today we're on top of things, it's hot, and we're gonna bake it for 25 minutes. In the meantime, I had another one over here that should be ready for us, and we'll take a look at it. Look how delicious that looks. It's still bubbly and hot. Doesn't that look yummy? How is that for a square of baked spaghetti? I've just gotta taste this. And you know, I could spruce it up with uh, fresh parsley or grated Parmesan cheese, but I don't think this needs anything but my fork. Oh. 
Oh, it's still steaming. <laughs> Your family's gonna just love you. And when we come back, a spicy shrimp and pasta casserole. While y'all were gone, I started getting our spicy pasta and shrimp casserole ready. This is an angel hair pasta that we're using. It's an even smaller pasta than the spaghetti. We're gonna begin by making a very easy, quick custard. Let's start with our eggs. These are beautiful brown eggs that I'm using. and I'm just gonna whisk those up a little bit. And I'm gonna add my cream. The half and half just works perfectly for it. And I'm adding some plain yogurt. You could actually use a sour cream if you don't have any yogurt around. Now I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of oregano and thyme. All right, we're gonna mix those up, and we're gonna add feta cheese, and we're gonna add Swiss cheese. So yummy. I'm gonna just finish up by adding some fresh chopped parsley. Doesn't that look good? It's beautiful custard. And then that's ready to go. And I'm gonna move this dish over to the side and we're gonna start with a layer of pasta. And I think since that pasta is so hot, our, our spaghetti spoon may be in order. Looks so, so good. In this dish, I'm using butter because the pasta is going straight into the bottom of this pan, so we definitely don't want it to stick. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is top our angel hair with just a jarred salsa. I'm using a mild today, but that's the fun thing about recipes. They're truly just a starting point for you. If you like hot, put in hot by all means. Now for the best part. We're gonna layer these beautiful shrimp on top of our pasta. And these are nice fat shrimp. Actually, I got these shrimp from a shrimper buddy of mine in Savannah, we, we get wonderful, wonderful fresh seafood. And now we're gonna cover it with Gruyere cheese. Just like this. And now we're gonna quickly cover it with another layer of pasta. Okay, so we've covered that, and now we're gonna top the pasta with another layer of shrimp. And y'all will notice that I'm leaving the tails on mine. Once again, that's strictly a personal preference. Okay, we're gonna ladle our custard over and kinda help it along so it can seep down in there. This is just gonna be out of this world. So now this is ready to go into the oven. We're gonna let that one bake for about 30 minutes, but in the meantime, I've got another one right over here that's been baking, and let's look at it. Oh. <laughs> it's perfectly beautiful. Look how delicious that looks. I think I'll just sprinkle it with a little fresh chopped parsley, and I could even add a little bit more cheese to the top. I've waited as long as I can, I'm ready to taste. It's so simple and so easy to make. <laughs> Life is good.
Next, we're doing fettuccine chicken salad. Okay, I'm taking the fettuccine out, cooked for about four or five minutes. I'm gonna let it drain and I'm gonna leave it actually just sitting right there for a few minutes while I start working on the chicken of the dish. All right, I've taken just a regular boneless chicken filet breast and sliced them into about one inch wide pieces. All right, I'm putting a little house seasoning on it, a little seasoning salt, and I'm gonna add a little olive oil just so it won't stick to the pan and it'll make it just a little bit juicier. I'm just gonna toss that together like that. And let it drink up all that good olive oil. And now I'm gonna add just a little freshly chopped thyme. And remember when you're using fresh herbs, it actually takes a little bit more than a dried herb would. Now I'm gonna just lay the chicken breast onto our pan, just like that. So that's all we do. And we're gonna stick this in the oven and we're gonna bake it for about 15 or 20 minutes. All right, so into the oven for about 15 or 20 minutes. In the meantime, I have another one over here that's been cooking. And we're gonna take him out and they look delicious. Don't those look good? And then we're gonna put our sauce together. So, in goes our mayo. And I'm gonna take the drippings from our chicken <laughs> and add to that mayonnaise just to make it a little bit richer. There we go. All right, now all we do at this point is add spring onions or green onions, depending on where you're from. Fresh parsley. We're just gonna stir that into that. A little of our house seasoning, a little seasoning salt. And the herb that really gives it a nice flavor is fresh basil. So into the mayonnaise base it goes. All right, now at this point, all we're gonna do is toss our pasta with this fabulous mayonnaise mixture that we've got. And you can actually do this the day before or the morning of. Okay, so we're just gonna toss that in just like that. We're just gonna put it onto our dish. That looked delicious. Almost looks like it's coated in an Alfredo sauce, doesn't it? A mayonnaise Alfredo sauce. And we're gonna take our chicken and just kind of place it around on our salad. Just like this. And then we're gonna garnish this very, very simply by just using cherry tomatoes and green onions. I think it's time. So let's see what we've got. It's just delish. Coming up next, some tips to make your pasta perfect. a few great quick pasta tips. When you're cooking your pasta, always cook a little extra. You can throw it into a Ziploc bag into your fridge. It'll keep for three days. Or you can toss it in oil and throw it in the freezer and it'll keep up to three months. And when you're making your baked spaghetti casserole and you just don't have time to make that homemade sauce, 
by all means, cheat and buy a jar sauce. Just add a little extra water to it to thin it out. And when making your fettuccine chicken salad, try different shapes. The children just love all these funky different pastas. All of our potluck pasta recipes came out so perfectly. I really can't make up my mind which one I like the best. I don't know if I like the chicken fettuccine the best or the baked spaghetti or the spicy shrimp and pasta casserole. But I do hope that you have a chance to try them all and hope you love them. So, till we eat again, best dishes from my kitchen to yours.